a brief introduction to Lillian's vegan world. Um, and uh, what, what are we going to call this? So, yeah, getting, getting off on the right food. Yes, I love it. Getting, that, that is a perfect title, actually. <laughs> That's um, Lillian Kumik. She's a vegan, completely a vegan. Yes, aloha. I am. <laughs> I admit, I am. So you, for decades now, have been doing vegan, vegan cooking. I have been cooking for a couple of decades, but uh, I have been myself fully vegan for the past 10 years. Uh -huh. I transitioned from uh, being a vegetarian and just naturally got into it. So here I am, plant-based, um, teaching people how to cook plant-based food and how to live the vegan lifestyle. Ah, okay. Well, let's, let's unpack that a little bit. Okay. What happened to make you go to vegetarianism, and then what happened to make you go from vegetarianism all the way to veganism? Mm -hmm. So I'm not, I'm not what you would call a typical case. Uh, from childhood, I never ate meat in any uh, way, form, or shape. But I did come from a, a family um, where meat was really the, the main staple. My father was Serbian. And he would actually bring home the animal. When I say the animal, I mean the whole thing. And he and his you know, buddies would get together and um, prepare it and freeze it and share it and all that sort of stuff. So people think, or my parents think, that I may have seen something that maybe traumatized me when I was young. So that put me off eating meat. And ever since then, when I look at something like a burger or uh, you know, something like that, I don't see a delicious burger. I see the animal. Uh -huh, yeah. <laughs> so that's that's how I that's uh, how my brain I functions. Think that's probably a good way to look at it. Yeah. So then you got into vegetarianism. Mm -hmm. That is no meat, but also no fish and no mm -hmm. fowl. Huh? That's right. But did you feel the same way about fish and fowl? I did. I never I never ever looked at uh, chicken, poultry, uh, fish, seafood and think it to be something that I would want to eat. Mm. So that was, that was my sort of mind frame growing up. And my parents didn't force me to eat what I didn't want to eat. They were concerned because back in, back in that day, back in those days, people sort of um, were and potatoes, in the belief that protein, yeah, all that. you've yeah. got to get the protein and you know, people thought that that was a healthy sort of yeah. way to eat. So yeah. I, I just kind of... Um, did my own thing, and my parents went along with it. But I did, throughout all the years while I was growing up, I did eat dairy, I ate cheese. Um, I didn't really drink milk much, but yes, cheese or cakes or, for example, pasta. I never thought that there would... I didn't eat eggs, but there are eggs in some pastas, stuff like that. So I wasn't really you know, conscious or fully aware of what I was eating until... Uh, you know, I became an adult and then started cutting things out one by one. And cheese was the last thing to go before I became fully vegan, say, yet. Yeah, you know, there was ago. a piece on uh, National Public Radio just an hour ago about cheese. Okay. And, and the point of the story, I, I, don't, I don't want to undermine what you've said, mm -hmm. but the point of the story was American cheeses are as good as any in the world now. We have come up over the clouds okay. in our quality of cheeses. Mm -hmm. You gave up cheese? I did, and I thought it would be really difficult to do, but honestly, there are so many, um, so many non-dairy substitutes out there, so many amazing, delicious, healthy products out there. I myself make my own vegan cheeses from cashew nuts. Ah, okay. So let me, let me sort of put that together now. So we go from vegetarian to vegan, and vegan, you extract eggs, you extract Cheese, mm -hmm. all dairy products, you extract anything made with a dairy product, yes. in, including all kinds of composite foods that we're used to. Um, and then you have the basic core vegan stuff. And, and there's right. plenty of protein to go around in vegan. You, you can live a, a life of protein also. We all need protein to yes. some extent. Mm -hmm. And so you have achieved for a, a while now, mm -hmm. yeah, the vegan life. And, and it's, it hasn't... It, it hasn't, it, it works well on you, Lillian. <laughs> Thank you, know, you, Jay. You, you don't look like anybody, you know, different. No. <clears throat> so no, the question, the question mm -hmm. is then, the, the way you make vegan food taste good, 
Mm -hmm. And my understanding is you have an ability to make vegan food taste really good. How do you do that? <laughs> Thank you. That is a compliment. Um, just years of experimenting. So uh, if I can tell you a little bit about myself, I, I am from Sydney, Australia originally, but I spent the last 30 years of my life in Japan. So I have been lucky and very fortunate enough to be around what I think is the best cuisine in the world. Japanese food is so tasty. It has a depth of flavor that really, in my opinion, most other um, cuisines just can't reach. And I think that's due to their umami, umami, which is the fifth uh, food taste, along with sweet, bitter, sour, and uh, salty. So mm -hmm. the, um, I think once you start learning more about um, how to cook food and how to make it taste better, you can, you can then start playing around with getting more flavour and depth into your cooking. So when I became vegan in Japan, I knew that I would only survive if I learned how to cook this sort of food because uh -huh. Japanese in Japan, the... Um, Seafood is everything. Yes, and basically everything is cooked in a fish broth, ah. or what we call dashi. I think you may have heard that... Um, that terminology before. So I think it, yeah, just uh, living in Japan helped me, um, helped me become a good cook. Uh -huh. it, it really did. I learned so much over the years and uh, the food that I cook, the vegan food I cook, I haven't really seen anything like that here in Hawaii. I've just moved here three months ago. Um, after, not a know, lot of vegan in Hawaii. Um, I think it's starting here. I definitely, starting, I definitely yes. there see there are some the, restaurants yes, around, and I yeah. think people are getting on board. They're asking for vegan menu mm -hmm. items. So the question is um, worldwide. Mm -hmm. Sounds to me like veganism is actually expanding, uh, and we're going to see more of it here on the mainland in Europe, yes. wherever, yes, even in, in, in Serbia, even. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, my father, who is not with us anymore, I think would say never going to happen <laughs> in somewhere like Serbia. But, but who knows? I mean, uh, growing up in Australia, Australia was, is definitely sort of the, the meat man's world. You know, throw another shrimp on the barbie and, you know, the more meat, the better. But yeah. I think it's just, uh, I think it's learning to move with the times and now that there is so much information out there. I think we're able to be a bit more open-minded, let's say, about what, you know, what plant-based uh, food can do for you. And um, what it can do for the planet. You know, definitely. If we all were using plant-based food and not meat, we'd be spending less energy in developing our menu. You know. Of course. So, um, okay, so there's ways. You have secrets and you have, I'm sure, maybe it's wrong to say secrets, but you have a creative you know, discovery process on tastes, which you learned in Japan, and you yes. taught yourself in Japan. Yes. Um, and uh, you're okay with sharing those secrets with the public, am I right? Not only am I okay with it, I, I, I am privileged and honored to be able to share my passion for food because I, I want other people to, um, to not be afraid. I think anything that is unknown is going to make you feel a bit sort of apprehensive and you know sort of close close that little world of yours but you know I want people to open up and be be uh, be open for some new ideas and I think now is the time where plant-based or vegan food is uh, going to really become a hit at people's tables I think more people are looking for healthier options to feed their families and their children and uh, I think Men are also coming on board and starting to uh, starting to try and you know become more okay with this plant based you know plant based cuisine. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I would love to I would love to and do look forward to sharing um, sharing my kitchen with you. Yeah. Okay. So we're developing a show. I want to talk yes. about that. What do you have in I'm mind excited. for the show? It's called Lillian's uh, Vegan World. I like that name. I love that name. <laughs> Jay, very, um, <laughs> yes, <laughs> that was a nice one. <laughs> Collaborative effort, yeah. Well, so I, I think that says it all, veg a vegan world. Um, I obviously am in my element when I'm cooking food. I like to be in my kitchen. I, 
I'm very comfortable and that's where my magic happens. And I, I'm looking forward to also showing people and teaching people how to cook vegan food in a way that really doesn't take up much of your time. It honestly doesn't. Cooking, cooking does not have to, especially when you're talking about plant-based food, does not have to take hours and hours of stewing or you know, simmering. It's a very easy, um, easy way of cooking, actually. You know, but some people think, rightly or wrongly, that veganism means you have to get you know, organic food, uh, not processed food, uh, and if it's raw, natural, it's better mm -hmm. uh, rather than cook it. You're talking about cooking it. Yes. Well, I think exactly what you said. There, there are so many misconceptions about veganism. And if I can just tell you very quickly, uh, veganism has nothing to do with gluten-free. It has nothing to do with raw diets. It has nothing to do with... Um, you know, non-oil, non-sugar diets, none of the above. A healthy vegan diet is actually high carbs and then low protein and fat. And I think the, for me, what, is, what has worked best is the 80-10-10 ratio. So about 80% of whole foods, I'm not talking about, you know, going out and eating fries every day, although I do love to eat fries <laughs> every now and again. You can, you can be both, right? <laughs> I think it's all about balance. And I think the healthiest, uh, the healthiest vegans that I see are the ones who eat a variety of foods. They eat the healthy oils. They you know, drink alcohol as well. I, I myself do enjoy drinking on occasion. I enjoy wine. So there's a lot of misconceptions. We're not... A bunch of hippies, or you know, that walk around eating only organic. And you, I, you even drink diet coke. I do. I that, that is really a a a, 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 um, a great um, a great comfort to me <laughs> because I drink too much diet coke. I do, and I think um, I think once you start, you know, putting too much pressure on yourself and you know denying yourself of things that you like, I think that's where people just give up and say, no, I can't do this. This is not for me. It's not about, I'm not here to turn anyone or tell people to become vegans, not at all. I'm here to only um, show you how to cook some of these, uh, you know, cook some really good food that tastes good and add that to your diet. I'm not here to minus anything. I'm here to add, But, but in know, the process, stuff. maybe you lose a little weight. In the process, um, maybe, uh, tell me if this is true, maybe you save some money even. Because meat is expensive? Yes, yes definitely. Um, both of those things, Jay, I think definitely you will, whether you try hard or not, you will see the weight start to come off. I think in particular, if you give up the dairy and substitute it for non-dairy options, you know, as I mentioned before, there's, there's a huge, like, wonderful, um, so many wonderful products out there that are made from uh, nuts, some, some delicious cheeses, any you know, milk you can think of, oat, soy, almond, cashew. So there's all these options out there. You can just substitute. You don't have to give up anything. You can still and eat pizza. It tastes pizza. As good. Yes. And we're going to, you're going to explore all these options and alternatives and yes. combinations and techniques to, to have a vegan as one of, one of your various diversified menu items in your life, and I yes. think everybody will benefit. And uh, when are you going to be on, and what are you going to do on your show? We only have a minute left. Okay, well, I'm so excited to um, tell you that I'll be on live uh, Friday morning at 10 a.m., every Friday, once a week, um, to be here to open you up to Lillian's vegan world and uh, the plant-based diet and lifestyle. Okay, Lillian's vegan world on Fridays at 10 o'clock. Yes. Uh, watch for Lillian and learn about food, learn about vegan food, which is really a very constructive and important thing to do in our times. Thank you so much, Lillian. My pleasure, Jay. Aloha. Aloha. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>